because we don't know what we don't know. And I've been saying this a yeah. lot for the last two weeks because I'm currently in a position where I don't know what I don't know with the amount of stuff I'm juggling because I have like one property where in escrow, like deposit is sent, we're going, like it's moving. Yay. And it's, like, it's, it's exciting, but it's terrifying. It's like, um, <laughs> hey, we just deposited 180,000. I was like, what? Oh, okay. So this is real now. All right, cool. Um, and also there's a lot that goes into that we, it's not like, I'm a real estate agent for everyone that doesn't know. I'm licensed in California. I've done multifamily transactions from descent. It's a lot different when you're in it. Because for me, it's easy. Yeah. Fire, do your due diligence. Now, oh, wait, that's me. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's really be careful with one who you partner with, but who you intend to work with. One thing I'll tell everyone, yep. and I don't mean to say this in the wrong way or to offend anyone, don't be a bunch of beginners grouping together yep. like it's exciting yep. it's cool it may sound fun but what happens when you hit a wall and you have no idea what to do then you have to bring someone on board that's going to cost you a lot whether it's fee or gp position or hey i've never raised um, five hundred thousand, but we need five million <laughs> <laughs> sure and look I, I, anyone who's raised capital before amazing but if you haven't done it here it's different and if you're going to yeah. asset manage it, more importantly, like, okay, I've done property management. I manage properties here. I'm getting into contract for 120 units. It's a different monster. To say I'm comfortable with $7 million of other people's money by myself, hypothetically, would be ridiculous. No yes. Chance. And I have no intentions of doing any of this alone or with a group yeah. of new that's why i'm actually still i'm not connected with anybody yet because i want to take my time and that advice was given to me in the very beginning was you can't just run around that new room of people that just learned everything you did and say hey let's be partners because that's it's like a marriage and these and these investments are like a five-year commitment a five-year marriage um so i haven't done that yet and i'm i've actually reached out to multiple asset management groups i'm i'm reading the books i'm on, I have met with four different asset man, like high level asset managers, picking their brains, and I'm going to be reaching out even more to more sponsors. And that way, when I do get on a deal or whoever what sponsor is there, they're going to know. I recognize I might have great. I have good bones. That's what I have. I have good bones with my ex, my experience and my education, but I don't have the experience of asset management yet. I hope that I will have a much faster learning curve given my experience and my education, but I'm not gonna joke around or try to pretend that I'm gonna be at that level until I've earned myself that level. Um, and somebody I saw a comment come by, I actually live in Issaquah, Washington, which is 15 miles east of Seattle. Okay. But I can fly and anywhere if somebody can help with anything. Yes, same yes. time zone. Everyone I talk to is on East Coast. I do, I'm like, hey, Pacific time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in LA, hence, yeah, but I'm in LA. So. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, no, it, awesome. Uh, and I think one thing, too, that's really big on, like, when starting out is really to find out what part of the equation and where you want to fit in. It, it's, yeah. Don't go to the thing that you think is the coolest, funnest, best thing because you think that'll bring the most reward. You'll get stuck. Um, also, yeah. like, starting off with i may be the smallest person in the biggest in a big room with a lot of people and may not know what's going on that's good thing good be confused if i'm saying stuff you don't understand good because i'm in rooms where yeah. people are saying stuff that i don't understand yeah I, um, so ask do you it's know what my favorite question is my what? favorite question is what am i not asking that i should be asking 100 100 yeah oh, i always yeah. ask why but that's Story. Well, yeah, I like yours more. <laughs> I'm just like, why? <laughs> why, Jody? Are you planning Feel it, on? Please. <laughs> are you planning on getting a W two, a new W two? Uh, I'm actually doing some consulting work at a local asthma. Uh, it's in Seattle, so okay. I'm actually restructuring their front office right now. But it's it's um, contract work, so I can walk away at whatever point. Um, I don't plan on getting a W-2. Um, okay. I'm hoping that this will last about six months and then I have enough for a year. So I got to hustle. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, one of the things you might want to consider is 
you know, finding a team where you can provide your experience in the app asset management world, right? So mm -hmm. um, join a team that way, bring value to them that way. And that could be a great way for you to get your feet wet and start to to learn the business from the inside. So yeah, just, I actually put thought. on uh, one of the groups that I would like to, if anybody's got a due diligence coming up, I don't care where in the US it is, I'll fly. If you'll just let me walk with you and learn, I would love That's to just awesome. participate. Um, so, you know, the dime's on me, but if anybody does know of one, uh, I'd love for them to pass my name along so I can just really be boots on the ground learning. Awesome. Awesome. I have one. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> you got my name in there. Drop me a DM. Guys, there you go. You guys connect offline on that. So let me move Franz. <laughs> You're, you've turned your camera on. I appreciate that. Tell us about you and how you came to this group and what you're trying to accomplish here. Yeah, thank you. Um, trying. I'm in AZ. It's five o'clock here. So it's like I have two little kids. So this is like dinner time, so I have to like on and off, on and off with the camera. But uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in Phoenix. I, I jumped in into multi um, last year, at the end of last year. Um, fortunately for me, uh, my wife is able to support us financially. So I've been pursuing this full time. I, uh, I left my job. I was working for a company, an uh, investment firm. I left my job. And then soon after I left, um, uh, similar to um, the, the last, uh, I forgot her name. Yeah, Dirty. similar to her, like, they, they laid off my whole, the whole uh, firm here in Phoenix and uh, they sent everybody home just, just like that. Um, but I've been in, in the real estate for a couple of years now. My wife and I, we have a couple rental properties that we have, had, we have been here in, uh, in Arizona. We just wanted to add more. We wanted to scale because we want we do want to retire, you know, fully. We want to retire her fully, so she doesn't have to depend on her no big two. And we want to spend time with our kids, so we jumped it into multi. She she's been pushing me for years too. Like she's been pushing me for years, but I'm like I I don't want to flip. I don't want to do wholesale. I didn't see a way that I could you know do real estate full time until I learned about multi and syndication last year. Nice. Uh, so we jumped in, you know, we jumped in. Uh, I have a coach. I'm working with a coach. Um, and um, I just connected. Uh, I, 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 the Marcel came to a group call one time a few months back. But I didn't join the group until I met uh, another lady. She said, you should join uh, this group. So I joined recently. I had a call with uh, Trevor this morning. So this is nice. my first call. Uh, with this group, so I'm okay. just excited okay. to learn and network and um, just seeing what everybody's doing. Awesome! But well, we appreciate you being here. Love, uh, love the story. Love what you're trying to do. Are you planning to call brokers? <laughs> when I first started uh, a couple of months ago, like I was, I was making some calls. Uh, recently, I have not been making them that many calls. I've been focusing on more on building my building a team, networking with other more experienced indicators. So I've been do, doing more meetups, things like this, because um, I feel like I have a higher chance of getting a first deal if I work with someone who has experience. Uh, yeah. Going out new and trying to network with the brokers and it's it's hard. You're not gonna get the pocket pocket listing. Anything on 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 market is just doesn't work. Everybody, we all know this. So that's that's what I've been using. Just that's what I've that's my um that's what I've been doing. Just networking with other operators, uh, people that have more experience than I do. Yeah, I I mean you know we say it over and over again, right? This is a team sport, and that's. You've got to keep networking. You've got to keep building the relationships. Um, I agree with you as far as brokers go right now, right? If it's on the market, the chances of it being any good are, are not, not that high. Um, okay. You've got to find the pocket listings. And the only way you're going to get access to the pocket listings is to have relationships with people. Exactly. I can remember I, uh, I when I first started. Quick? Yeah, go ahead, Everett. Yeah, just really quick one on something you said. 
it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. Connecting with the right people and people who are doing it will absolutely help you get into the room and learn from them. But if you mm-hmm. actually want to be on the deal side, on the GP side, and actually change that financial freedom that we're all trying to change, you have to know what you're providing. Because every question anybody's ever going to ask you, you're going to have to have a moment of like, what do I actually provide? It's mm-hmm. exactly that. Any person as a GP, when you're forming your GP team, we've had this deal locked up for two weeks. We've changed four or five people have run in and out of the GP team, and we haven't even done anything yet. Anything mm-hmm. crazy. You right. have to know what you're providing. You have to know where you're at in that and focus on one thing that you specialize in. And if you can do other things, great. Perfect. Like that's that's cool, but don't overstretch yourself. But know what you can do and what you can do well and what's right. going to be a seat at the table. Right. If I say, hey, I just want to be involved or connect with people, they're all going to ask the same thing. What do you bring to the table to be part of the GP team? You can right. be part of the team. You can watch. You can do whatever. All that stuff is fun. And it's amazing learning experience. Don't get me wrong. But you want the first hands-on deal that you really run through the process to be one that you have actual equity in. Because it's going to take time now. Like you don't want to do something that's going to take you a lot of time. You don't reap all the benefits. Because this mm-hmm. isn't like a single-family flip. This isn't a one-month escrow or two-week escrow. This is a five-year turnaround. Your escrow is mm-hmm. three months. Are you going to throw yeah. away that time? No. So it's like really know, like figure out, and this is for everyone, figure out what's the one thing that if a GP, if you find the best deal in the world tomorrow, what are you bringing to the table to where you're, you have vested interest and in a position at the table on the equity side, the GP mm-hmm. side. And I'm going to stress that a lot because when you get to the weeds of things and it's like, I'm doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, I'm raising this much, you're raising that much. You look at your bottom percentage, you're like, oh, damn, that sucks. Yeah. And it's a reality. Like, what did I really do on the deal that, that earned me more equity? And you, when you look at it and it's not much compared to everyone else and it's not much compared to what you thought, Okay, maybe the first deal you learn on asset management, second deal, you better take it by the like head on and say, hey, I'm going to be first or second in charge on this. So you know your interest is vested. Like as much as I love multifamily and we all want to do this because it's like what it can offer us, no Mm -hmm. one's going to do this for free. Anyone that tells you they'll do this for free is absolutely crazy. It's like the coach that says, I love coaching, but charges 20000 a student. Like, oh, cute. If you love coaching, go coach AYSO youth soccer for free. Come on. Take away the 20000 check. Let's see how many people actually do the coaching. So I'm a firm believer in make sure you earn your seat at the table because quickly people will find a way to push you off. Because remember, every percent equity you take is an equity percent that someone else doesn't have. Mm-hmm. And if I can do one meal, one deal and maximize my equity ownership and then move on to the next and do the same, I'm going to win. And that's the bottom line. Well, and I'll, nice. I'll add on to that, that idea and that as somebody new, I believe the fastest way to get on the GP table is by offering opportunities to people to invest. That's the bottom line. If you can raise capital, if you can bring capital to the team, you can add it. You can don't just say I can to any team. To add to that, don't just say I can raise this much. Have you done it before? No. Okay. Do you have any soft commits? No. Okay. So you can't show, like, say you can by putting in the work now, preparing the people who would eventually be investors. Like, hey, X Y Z friend has a hundred thousand. Cool. This other person has two hundred. This other person has two fifty. This other person has. If you have. 10 friends and you have 3 million total, let's say, of potential capital, you are lucky to get 10% of that. I have a question. Yes, Go sir. for it. So when asking or when raising capital and you're, I'm, oh, let me ask this first. Have y'all raised capital before? Yes, I have. All right, cool, sweet. So, yeah. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, so my question is, is when you're raising capital and you're calling these people, uh, let's just say you have a deal and you're, and you're trying to raise money for it, or let's say you have a potential deal 
Uh, but you're you're looking for like a soft commit. What are some questions that you should be asking them? Like, do you, you, you just call a random person and say, hey, how much money do you have? And what do you need for me for me to get you to give me the money? So two things. One, be very careful at what stage of the deal process you're in on who you talk to and what you say. I don't want to get into the too in depth about it, but SEC regulations, 506B, 506C, what you can and can't do and what you can and can't say can if someone rats on you because you said the wrong thing and they report you to the SEC, your entire team is dead. Like you guys are done so. So be very careful with that, with who you're talking to, how you're saying it, and when you're saying it. Wait, That's so why I say it's better to tell or to talk about this now when you don't have a deal because you're not breaking any rules. You're just trying to put yourself out there as someone who comes up uh, or who gets these opportunities. For so example... What? What do you mean by what do you mean by like what rules are there to break? So if I'm in a room like this, right? Although yeah. you guys are on this call, I do not have a relationship with every single one of you. If I do not have a relationship and the deal is a 506B, I cannot come ask you for money. Unless you are accredited and I have a 506C. If not, we don't have a relationship like okay, you and I might because we've talked before. But if I haven't talked to anyone here more than this call, we don't have a relationship to the SEC. I trust you guys. Thank you all for being here. SEC is going to say you guys don't know each other. You cannot get money from that person unless you have an established relationship. Why do people take pictures when they go to networking events and all these crazy events? I have a relationship with that person now. Here's the proof. I have a photo. Mm. Why well, I, I don't take photos of random people. But I met this person, we had a conversation, here's evidence. Obviously, you hope it doesn't get to that point. But if I'm trying to raise capital, like for my Florida deal, I cannot tell all of you guys, hey, please invest in my deal. If we're 506B, I don't know you guys like that. Like, I'm going to get burned bad. What is 506B and what is all that? It's just what the regulation is for how capital can be raised. So, Logan, this, yeah, this is a, a totally separate topic, right? Yeah, that, sorry, sorry. No, 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 it's okay. It, these are great questions, right? But what I would tell you is I would encourage you to go search for that, right? Search sure, for yeah. 506C versus 506B because yeah. that's critical to know the difference, right? Sure, but, but I do want to bring it up for your question because you have to be careful when someone says, can you raise capital for me? Like, I'll leave it at that. Of yeah. Make sure you know how they're raising yeah. capital and who you're saying what to. Okay. It's not just, I have this deal, I need a million dollars everyone run at me you're gonna lose and get burned bad so yeah, just to, it, to, to ed's point if, if you are raising capital for a specific deal make sure you know those rules <laughs> go learn those rules and make sure you don't violate them okay. right now you you just want to have generic conversations right you want to tell people what you're up to you want to tell people that you are looking for uh, investment opportunities, and you're looking for people who are interested in learning about investment opportunities, right? I I never start a conversation with a potential lender about a specific deal, right? My goal is to learn about them. So I'm just going to ask questions about, you know, what are your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, are you interested in investing in real estate? Have you invested in real estate before? Um, tell me about that. Right. Tell me about how you've invested in real estate. Before. Um, but, you know, some of the things you're looking for are it's like I was a I was a financial advisor at one point in my life. And what do they tell you to go after? You're looking for life changes. Right. You're looking for somebody who just lost a job. Jody, she's a perfect person to connect with and, you know, say, hey, Jody, you know, what do you what are you doing with your investments now that you're in transition? Right. Divorce, family death, sale of a business, sale of a house. Anytime money moves, you want to you want to be you want to be there to have a conversation. Hopefully, you already have a relationship, right? So that's why we want to establish those relationships now. Not approaching them with a specific deal. You want to come to them with a deal on your third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh conversation, right? You mm -hmm. want to plant the seeds. Of what you're doing today but not don't I, I would avoid talking about a specific deal i mean if you have one obviously hey I, i've got this deal um you know 
here's what's here's the situation. I'd love to get your thoughts on. It. Don't even ask for money, right? Just ask for a conversation, for especially you as a young person, right? Hey, I'm I'm looking to get into this deal. I'd love to get your advice, right? You start there, and just so, you so want you want to have that conversation with as many people as you can, and tell your story over and over and over again. And um, one thing one thing could do too is, hey, I have this. I came across this deal in this location, this size, this long is the investment. Um, and these are their expected returns. What, is this, if I found something similar to this, or do you know someone that would be interested in investing in this? You don't put it like, hey, do you? It's one, if I found something like this again, would you be interested in hearing about it? Because I, find, I come across a lot of opportunities like this. And then you find out what their criteria is. If someone says, I don't want to invest in California because the laws suck and um, everything's expensive, cool. Where, where do you like? And you also, you want to be in a position where you're posting, I think this sort of social media is very powerful. You're posting like, hey, um, did this great, great underwriting Zoom, learned a lot, looking forward to underwriting um, deals and investing in multifamily. Then people are curious. If you come up the first time they hear that you're doing multifamilies when you're asking for money, it's like your neighbor you only hear from when they need to borrow a tool. Or the kid in school only is like, oh, I forgot some money. Like, I forgot my wallet today. You mind spotting me. They're like, all right, that's cool. Now, but it's like, where, like, you don't even say hi to me when I see you the rest of the time. You know what I mean? It's the same idea. You don't, the first time you talk to someone, you're not asking for a favor. That just it's, it looks bad. Yeah. Um, and, and, okay. And yeah, some people might not care and be like, oh, yeah, I'm down. Let's invest. Cool. And usually not though. It's people like I go to a lot of meetups. Why? Because even and, and they're real estate focused too. And here's something to keep in mind. Multifamily, as much as we are in the right rooms, we talk about it, we hear it a lot, we see it a lot, uh, and a lot of people around us may be talking about it. Go find 10 people in your city. Go to your gym. Okay, my gym's packed right now. Ask everyone there how many of them have even considered investing in multifamily real estate. And then don't even, you're not even scratching the surface of what this game really is. And you're talking like a different language to them. I'll go to a real estate meetup, start talking multifamily. I'll have the entire room looking at me. Like I'm the crazy one. But like he's doing what, where, why, how? So remember that, like this may all seem easy and like realistic to us. To a lot of people, this is, this is crazy. Hmm. kind of is crazy let's be fair yeah it is <laughs> like what we're all crazy well, that's why we're here you know that that makes me think of something else ed you know one of the things we talk about too is is getting on stages right and we all have a stage this you know, is a stage have, this, is, this is a stage, stage. yep uh, you know come into these calls participate right turn your camera on ask questions raise your hand get known in this community, right? Because there are people on these calls that are doing deals. And if you're always constantly in the background, if you've got your camera off, if you're never raising your hand, if you're never talking, nobody's going to know you, right? <laughs> Thanks, Jody. Uh, you know, so when you get known on these calls that you're going to find your teammates right here, right? And I, I want to tell a story about... I'll share a win because, and I hope somebody be thinking of your wins, right? This call isn't over yet. We don't have a lot of time left. We've got 13 minutes left, but if somebody has a win, raise your hand. I'd love to hear it. So I had a win that I was going to share last night, but my microphone wasn't working. So I didn't get to do it, but I attended a, an event last Thursday and it was a single family event to your point, Ed. And the guy who was hosting the event met me at a multifamily event. So he knew me as the multifamily guy. He doesn't know my experience level at all, right? He's just assuming because I approach things with confidence that I have a lot of experience. And he brought me on stage and handed me the mic to talk about multifamily. Guess what? I had three people from that meeting come up to me and ask me about investing in multifamily. They have capital to invest. One was a dentist. One has a high level position in IT, and I'm forgetting the third person right now, but um, these are all people who have, they have, I would say one has a W-2, one has a small business, right? 
they're high income earners. They don't have time. They like what they do. This dentist is not likely going to walk away from her dental practice. They need help. They need people like us that are on the ground every day learning how to invest, learning how to underwrite, learning how to evaluate good deals. And they need us as the conduit to get them into a good multifamily deal. So it, it's telling your story, right? That's what I did. I got, I was in the right place. I got lucky. They handed me a microphone. I had a chance to tell my story. And three people with money came up to me in that one event. And it's unbelievable. But that's what happens when we put in the work, right? How many networking events have I been to where that didn't happen? 100, 200, I don't know, a whole bunch. So these people I, fell, I, in, fell in my lap, right? Because I keep showing up over and over and over again. And that's here's something doing. important too. You don't know who somebody knows. I don't care if you, you find the here's a funny story security guard working at an apartment building that someone went to tour that would no one gave attention to was the person who just had an inheritance of multiple millions of dollars peter i think we were on the same call when we heard that story like really like you never know who's gonna know somebody or have something that could be of value to you and you could be of someone else well somebody I, like that needs help right they, yeah, don't they don't know, know what to do. They have no idea what to do with that money. It, it, Pete, there are tons of people out there that have capital that really they need help. They need help to invest. They don't even know what a good investment multifamily real estate or real estate in general is for them. So that's we, we've got to tell that story, right? Especially high income earners that are going to continue to do what they do, right? They don't have time to figure this out. They need the income from their capital, but more importantly, they need the tax breaks. And that's the other thing that multifamily is so big. You know, For some of these people, the tax breaks are more important than the money they're gonna make uh, on their investment. So, um, and, and the only way you get to know that is by continuing to hang around, continuing to do the work, continuing to learn the process. Logan, like you, you just got a, an earful tonight, right? 506B, 506C. You got to know what that is, right? Go we give you a little feel for it tonight. Go Google that. Make sure you dig into that a little bit and understand the difference because that's going to be really, really important. And I'm happy to talk to you about it more, you know, offline. Or we even, maybe we even create a recording and, and do a Zoom for that. Um, sure. We've got sure. people. Apparently, people don't know what time this meeting is because they're still coming into the, to the Zoom. So anyway. Um, it, I, I don't see any other hands up. Nobody else is, we're not going to obviously do a call tonight. We only have nine minutes left. Um, I, I can continue to call on people. I love to do that. I'm so glad you shared with us, Jody. Thanks, Anna, for showing up and talking to us. Um, well, Obi, Obi's here. Let's talk to him. How did you get to this group and what are you doing here so late? I'm so sorry. I'm so um, it's all good. It's all good. We're just kidding with you. And that's all right. Um, I'm very new to the um, uh, real estate. Uh, it's, it's okay. Really nice. I'm really quite new to the U.S. actually. So can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you right now. I, it's coming in and out a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really new. I'm um, from the U.K. So the whole um, system in the United States is quite new to me. I understand the fundamentals. Um, the strength mostly um, would be in um, um, financial, reading financial statements because I'm quite um, versed because I worked with um, uh, private equity firms that acquire businesses. So I understand the um, acquisition processes um, um, in terms of uh, reading financials, understanding um, due diligence, um, accounting, and um, valuations, and those sort of things. Now I understand that um, you know some of those are um, similar to. Um, you know, real estate investment, especially on the commercial side, because it's 
literally a business as well. So I I understand that. However, certain um, things I not so so familiar with. Um, for example, where you have what you consider as an accredited investor in the United States is different from what you consider an accredited investor in the UK. So and um, the the ways where you can um, approach investors in the UK is quite different from the ways you can approach um, investors here. Um, there are certain things you can't say in the UK. I don't know if you can say them here when you try to attract um, investors. So those sort of things I want to 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 know. And um, also I wanted to know um, uh, literally um, the or the ways to source um, uh, good deals here. Um, um, so I, I for this call clearly is um, talking to brokers which is because brokers are quite um, they have close affinity to a lot of sellers. Um, so I understand I understand that, but I wanted to also know um, what are the different sort of platforms to encounter those um, you know the, the right brokers and to be able to establish relationships with them and to be able to nurture those relationships because um, it's not just about what's um, available now, but what can be available um, later on or you know, throughout the lifetime of the relationship itself, like uh, when they come to the relationship. Exactly. So it, it, it's a little pretty difficult to, to hear you, but I think I understand the, the gist of what you're asking and um, you know, what sort of platforms do you use to connect with brokers? And um, we, if you go back and find our YouTube channel, go back and listen to some of the prior uh, calls, you'll hear some of that. But just real quickly, two of the main resources that we use are LoopNet and Crexi. And Crexi is C R E X I. Um, and LoopNet, Loop, L O O P N E T. Those are places where you'll find commercial assets listed. We usually search those sites specifically for multifamily, and that immediately gives us access to a whole bunch of, of brokers that focus on multifamily. We call them and have a conversation about a specific asset that they have listed, usually knowing that that asset is not going to be something that we're going to buy, right? But it's a conversation starter. It's a place to start that relationship. Um, and so that that's how we do it, right? That's how we find the people. That's how we make the phone calls. We call them about a specific deal. And then, you know, one of the questions we ask them is, hey, do you have any off-market deals that you're working right now? And you know what? You make enough of those phone calls. Every once in a while, you catch somebody at the right time and they say, as a matter of fact, I do. Um, just got this lead today. I'll send you, you know, can you send me the T12 and the rent roll? Yes, I can. You know, so all of a sudden, boom, you make one phone call and you're looking at an off market deal. It does happen. Um, but it doesn't happen if you make one call every quarter. Right? You've got to be on the phone consistently calling brokers, building those relationships. And you weren't here earlier, but one of the things you talked about too is when they do send you a deal, do some quick underwriting. Come on, on our call on Tuesday nights to do the napkin underwrite with Ed Shamarian and then follow back up with them. Right? If it's a good deal to pursue, call them and tell them, hey, me and my team, or my team and I are going to be pursuing this deal. Or if the deal doesn't make any sense, we call them back and we tell them, you know what, we're not going to pursue this one and here's why. Um, so, it, you know, and that just starts to build that relationship, right? Because it's going to take building a relationship over a period of time for these brokers to start to send you. So um, obviously they have relationships with other people, other people that they have closed deals with already, right? They're gonna be the ones that they're gonna be in closer contact with. So you've gotta be there at the right time, reaching out to them as often as you can, possibly can. So, um, and don't expect that off-market deal to work out. It's a grind. No doubt, Bleb, it is absolutely, that, you know, and that's a great point, not to, not to turn it negative, right? But multifamily is the long game, right? This is not a get-rich-quick scheme. 
you're not likely going to do a deal that's going to put money in your pocket tomorrow. Um, this is building wealth for the long haul, for sure. And it, and it is a grind. There's no question about it. And that's why we need this community, right? If you're out there on your own, trying to do this alone, in a vacuum, your chances of succeeding are, are nil, right? You need the encouragement. You need to build the relationships within these groups, right? So <laughs> you don't quit because you can't, right? I can't quit because Ed expects me to show up every week. Um, Ed can't quit because I expect him to show up every week. And we just, you know, we need each other to stay motivated and, and keep after this thing. So I hope, I hope we're <laughs> successful in doing that for you guys to encourage you to keep showing up, keep learning, keep grinding. Grinding is, is the perfect word. So, Peter, um, you bring up a good point. Like, this stuff is hard. Like, if anyone thought, like, this is easy, I'm sorry. Like, this is, it's hard. Like you have to learn a lot. You have to put yourself in the right place. You have to put yourself in the right room. You have to partner with the right people. Like I wasted a long time with the wrong people. I also have been doing this for a long time and didn't see many results. But you got to keep sticking with it. Um, that's the biggest you talk part. About, you talk about no results, right? I don't know if you were there last night, but Gino was talking about that, right? And how many of the experienced players that have been on our calls that their first deal took Two years, 18 months, 12 months. It's very rare that somebody comes, oh, yeah, I did my first deal in the first month. That happens in single family all the time. That just does not happen in this world. That is, you know, first of all, nobody closes a deal in 30 days. So you'd be lucky to be in dialogue on a deal that you buy within the first 30 days. That's just, you know, talk about being in the right place at the right time. This is a grind. It's going to take time. If you don't buy, if you buy your first deal in 12 months, you're crushing, absolutely crushing. Um, and in fact, the the Freedom Boys, they they bought their first deal in like 90 days, and probably more like 120 from the time that they actually started. That that's unbelievable, absolutely amazing that they managed to do that, right? But timing, they got with the right broker, had the right client, and it all worked out, and that's. That's amazing. But, you know, here we are six months later, they still don't have another deal, right? We're all still grinding it out. When's their next deal going to come? I don't know. It, it's going to take time and we just got to keep grinding. So, Jody, really appreciate you showing up tonight. I would love it if you would record some of these calls that you're going to make um, and share those with us. If you're willing to do that, um, that would be super helpful. I think you'll get a lot out of it if you come back to the community with those calls and we can go over them together in a, in a safe place, right? Um, no, no pressure. If you want to do that, that would be fantastic. <laughs> We'd love, to, love to have you share that with us. Um, and one last thing before we head out. Guys, use us as a resource. Use us as, like, for example, Logan, if you want to talk shop, let's talk shop. Anyone here, if you guys want to talk about this stuff, let us know. I'm I'm on the West Coast, so uh, a lot more people here actually were on the West Coast, so yay. But um, I, time difference doesn't matter. Let me know. Text us. Don't hesitate to ask questions. I've been in paid mentorships where we it was pretty expensive, to be fair, monthly. People weren't showing up, and I would be the only one that was asking questions on a Zoom call for three weeks straight, two weeks straight. Guess who got a lot of, a lot of value and had a lot of questions answered? Like, I, And that's all the stuff I regret to take to you guys. It's stuff that I learned in mentorship with people who've done thousands of units, right? So use the people that are make themselves available, not just Peter and I, but everyone else in the community, whether it's the leaders or anyone who, who, that hosts a Zoom or just whoever was willing to help out, you know, like you don't realize how much doing this helps not only us to like reconnect and build, feel, like I want to do a deal with each one of you, like I, we don't just do this because I like hearing myself talk for an hour, even though that is the case. We do this because we want to connect with you. Like, I want to help people. Like, I want to be involved in your deals. Um, and if I can do anything to help you guys out, let me know. So, yeah. yeah I'm glad I got a laugh out of that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank absolutely. you, guys. This was, a, this was a great call, and I'm looking forward to next week. I'll awesome. see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we're on tomorrow for for napkin underwriting come back and join us there go, go make your calls 
get the T12 in the rent roll and come on and bring it back tomorrow night and let's do the napkin. <laughs> Put it on the napkin and, and move it forward. And take I action. think I'm double booked during the napkin call. I think I'm already double booked with something, but but don't worry, you're going to see me again. There you go. Awesome. There you go. Yeah. Look, there's a lot of Zooms. You can't be on all of them. We get it. So, And uh, all of them are on the YouTube. So if you miss one or want to catch a replay, I'm not just plugging it, but uh, I am shameless plug. They're there. So if you miss a call, you want to jump on there and um, catch up or go back to previous ones or with the other guests that we've had. We've had some pretty awesome guests. Definitely take advantage of that too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, and we are, it, we're four minutes over. We are going to sign off, but please take Ed's advice, show up. And when you show up, participate. I promise you, you'll get way more out of it. If you turn that camera on, raise I've, your hand, ask questions. That's, that's how you're going to get the best. This, most value this out of sort of deal, someone from the community is on the partnership because they were on the calls and I connected with them. They asked questions and then they ended up joining. Yep. It'll happen. I got four more deals lined up, so let's do it. <laughs> I need I need help. Nice. <laughs> this team needs to grow a little bit. That's it. We need more partners, guys, for sure. So we appreciate your participation. Thank you, everybody, so much for being here. We look forward to seeing you again to tomorrow night and uh, or on some Zoom in the future. You guys have a great night. Thank you. Hey, guys. Good night.